Most of us deal with lots of conflict and drama internally. We don't know how to voice out our hurts and feelings. And even when we do, we don't know who to trust with our darkest secrets. We stay in silence and suffer. And we end up flaring up when we shouldn't. Depression can happen to anyone. The most important thing is how you deal with it, how you channel that emotions. Today on Health in the Spotlight, I have this amazing, young, beautiful lady who went through certain challenges in life that got her depressed. Not only did she survive, but she started to advocate for women so no one goes through what she experienced. Mrs. Krewa Ufosuapia has a lot to share with us today, and please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Life is a journey, and we are travelers. It's a beautiful journey we all find ourselves on. And like all other travelers, you make bumpy, curved, straight, and even crossroads, and you have to take a decision. The hustles, choices, pain, and experiences are all tools to our growth. Remember, remember, traveler, that you are here but for a while. And so you need that inner peace. Guard it. Welcome back, viewers. I, I choose to call her KKK. So please welcome to the show. Thank you, Rosina. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Great to be here. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely day today. I know. Sunny and airy and breezy. <laughs> Very breezy. <laughs> yeah. Well, so welcome to Health in the Spotlight. Thank you for having me. It's, I, I mean, I had a background chat earlier before this yes. whole shoot and all that. And you shared with me some, some very personal stories. Yeah. And I, I must say that I'm, 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 I'm really happy that you, you are doing something good with whatever you went through. So yeah. for yeah. the sake of our viewers, yeah. we would like for you to share your story with us and how it all started and whatever transpired to lead to the dis depression sorry <laughs> okay thank you rosina for having me and thank you viewers for watching um so just so you know i'm below 35 years so every experience i'm sharing right now uh -huh. it's everything i've experienced between the age of 24 to 31 32 years um Many of our women there may know, but there's a pregnancy complication called hypertension disorders in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It's popularly known as preeclampsia. All right. As I sit here, I'm a four-time survivor of four that. Four times. Yes, of that condition. Um, out of four pregnancies, I've lost three babies, so I have oh, one no. surviving child who is currently eight years old, and she's doing very fine. Um, today, I stand here and sit here strong because I decided to turn my trauma into something good to help Victorious, others. Yeah. As I speak right now, preeclampsia and its sister called eclampsia and its friend called HELP syndrome mm -hmm. is the first leading cause of maternal mortality in Ghana. Yeah. So somebody may ask, what is she talking about? What is preeclampsia? Yeah. It's simply hypertension in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We all know that hypertension happens every day. We know that elderly people are getting hypertension, people are getting hypertension, but this is a hypertension that a woman gets when she's pregnant. Mm. In other words, you don't have to have hypertension before you get it when you're yeah. pregnant. Yeah. And so those who are at risk, if you're below 20 years, above 35 years, the first time pregnancy, maybe the man you've married, you've never had any sexual intercourse because before, so the first three months you have intercourse, you're prone to you know, have preeclampsia, mm -hmm. or you are obese, or you are carrying more than one baby, mm -hmm. or you've subjected yourself to treatments like IV treatments, or you're carrying multiple babies, you are all at risk, or family history. In my case, I got, my first pregnancy was in 2012, mm -hmm. I was excited, young couple, you know, yeah. in Ghana here. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't have know, baby, I know, I know that the baby like must follow. It's, it's <laughs> like especially the first one. Exactly, it's, 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 it's like our our son and saw you, and so you know, I was so I was pregnant. We were excited, and then you know, went to the regular antenatal private clinic, and I was fine. You know, I think at a point I started experiencing headache. And I was getting big. I thought it was normal mm -hmm. because come see me. So naive. This yeah. is me, a first degree holder. But I was just so naive about everything. Yeah. And so I kept on going to the clinic. And then at 27 weeks, we had a scan. 
the scan told me it was a girl, you know, we're excited. Oh, well, we're going to have a girl. Yeah. And then somewhere October 2012, one day, I, was, I went out with my husband and I complained of headache, being tired, you know, fatigue. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you need to get some rest, you uh -huh. know. You're pregnant. I was like, yeah, you're pregnant. Exactly. It's normal. Like, Tiredness come comes on. with it, you know. Deal with it. Exactly. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. So I go and sleep, you know, at night we go to bed. And then the next thing, around 2 a.m., all I hear is my name being called. Kwewa, kwewa, kwewa. And this is me unconscious. All I had was my name and I passed out. Ooh. So I was rushed to um, a clinic mm -hmm. where they stabilized me with uh, something in the teeth. Mm -hmm. Because what I experienced was what you call eclamptic seizure. Oh, you I'm fitted. I'm exactly. Mm. I fitted. What okay. our viewers, if our viewers know, those who have epilepsy, how they fit, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And so they stabilized me and then rushed me to a public hospital at Tema. Luckily, there was a surgeon on and at that duty. night so i had what they call emergency cesarean where they cut you open and take 27 weeks yes please oh so <laughs> yeah all this time i was unconscious yeah. so what i'm telling you is what was told me by yeah, my yeah, husband yeah, yeah, yeah. so they took the baby out you know i think i was unconscious for about 12 hours because i had reached i had reached the the worst of that condition mm. eclampsia my brain has been affected so i'm off oh so luckily I didn't pass. I survived mm -hmm. and I recovered. And then, you know, the baby was in NICU, the neonatal intensive, yeah, intensive care, unit. care unit. And um, they, they said, oh, you don't have to feed the baby. It was a boy. It turned out being a boy. Oh, it wasn't even a girl. It wasn't even a girl. That's what our scans do to us here yeah, in Ghana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had this baby. And then after three days, they said, oh, I could hold him. And he was so tiny, eh? very tiny and so i was like oh wow. he, he still looked like an animal to that's, me that's your baby i know i was like oh that's my baby so it felt it felt wonderful uh -huh. like being a first time mom and so then i think i was i bathed it a bit you know you're yeah, even wondering which fingers to use to bathe because it's so <laughs> it's so tiny oh you were allowed to bathe yeah, the baby so like, at, at the nipple at the nipple just to clean exactly mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and then they said oh we can start breastfeeding through the tubes they did that then that's when the complication started. He started becoming pale, and then he was just, you could see suffering in his yeah. eyes. And so I think the, the seventh day I was discharged, and when I was going, I went with my husband to the Niku, and when I went there and I saw him, Aww. I could just see my son saying, Mommy, please let, let me, me go. go. I was, it was a very traumatic experience. Yeah. And so I left the hospital. They said, oh, come tomorrow, come check on him, which was a Sunday. So I go and I come on Sunday, and my husband goes to the Nico and he comes out and he's like, oh, they said they moved him to another ward or mm. another place. I'm like, uh, yeah, right. And so we should come back later. So we were driving, we stopped by the beach, and then he told me that the baby had passed. Oh, no. Today I'm smiling, but yeah, that time I, I was I can imagine what you were going through. I mean, it must be heartbreaking going through cesarean section yeah. for a baby that didn't survive yeah it's, 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 it was, it's it was traumatizing it was very traumatizing and this is an emotional trauma that i suffered yeah. and so you know in between that and six months you you find yourself grieving yeah you know you you don't want to talk you feel nobody understands you, yeah. not even your husband. And yeah. really, all you just want to be is in your corner. Yeah. Yeah. You see other people get pregnant or they are pregnant and you are annoyed. Because yeah. you don't see why they seem to be fine. And what happened to you? Like, you why, why you? Exactly. Yeah. And you can't even enjoy and celebrate with others mm. because you feel that should be your congratulation yeah. and not you receiving condolences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... It almost affected the relationship with me and my husband because he felt I was being too emotional. And you know our, our men, yeah. they yeah. don't express yeah. emotions daily. I know. Let alone going through a traumatic event yeah. like this one. Yeah. He won't understand. So we, you yeah, know, I know. I know that sometimes they, they will try to be like, you know what, child, let's let it go. Yeah, but he, come on, I carry the baby. I, exactly. And he's like, do you know what I saw? Seeing uh -huh, you die, do you uh -huh. know what it happened to me? I'm like, yeah, but you see, 
I'm suffering physical trauma because of the cats. Exactly. A cat without a baby to compensate mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. pain, mm -hmm. as well as the emotional mm -hmm. trauma. And, and so you know you have this lactating thing Exactly. To the after breast the comes, it's, it's, it's bulky and they have to give you it's medicine. painful. Trust me, that's another thing it's on the its own. It's the worst experience. It's the worst experience. And so, we, we, you know, we had issues, but then luckily six months I got pregnant again. Oh, nice. And then, you know, we tried, we, we spoke about it and we're like, ah, oh, let's get some funds and go outside. And so I did six months antenatal here. In Ghana? In Ghana. And then I went outside, that's to the US. Mm -hmm. And then I had the same condition again, but I was managed from 30 to 37 weeks. And so I had a, another cesarean, but good delivery. My baby didn't have to go to NICU. We were fine. That's your fourth baby? That's my second baby. Your second baby. Yeah, so okay. we were fine. Fast forward 2017, I get pregnant again. Cool. This time, money no day. So we, you we, know, stay. we, we couldn't, we couldn't we travel. <laughs> exactly. So we had to stay here. I went through the whole thing again. Another baby boy. At the same time, 27, 28 weeks, I have severe preeclampsia and another cesarean. Mm -hmm. But this time, the baby dies in my womb. Ooh. I was just there one day, I was just going to check my pressure. They're like, when I got there, they're like, ah, oh, we have to admit you, your pressure is 150, 100. Mm. Then they admit me. Three days, they keep on doing the routine checks. You know, one day the nurse comes and say, we can't hear a heartbeat. Mm. I was like, I didn't know whether to respond or yeah, to decide. I yeah, was confused. Yeah. And then the doctor came and confirmed with the scan. We lost the baby. You're kidding. This was a pregnancy my husband didn't want well, me to. Was, he was like, don't, you know, we've been through so much. Why oh do you no. want to have this again? And I was like, so in this case, I was so traumatized. The next thing I could ask the doctor was, how fast can we get the baby out? Mm. He's like, well, let's induce you first to see if it will come out through the vagina and so that we don't have to cut. Oh, induction started. failed. And so this they time, to go cut another cesarean, knowing that it's yeah, no, already it's a dead fetus coming this, out. This, this, this is terrible. All this while, I, I just didn't see the baby. When they come out, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I want to keep memory of the living baby. Yeah, of me the living baby. And not the dead person. And so I lost my third baby. Oh. And then fast forward a year later. You got pregnant. I got pregnant. So I, I am a very fertile I, you're person. You're very fertile. Very, like, come that's on. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm a very fertile <laughs> person. But you see, getting pregnant is one. That's where you're dealing with issues of fertility, infertility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sustaining the pregnancy full it's time another is another. Thing. Yeah. Having a safe delivery on the day the baby is coming yeah. out yeah. is another because there are issues of stillbirth. Yeah. And carrying your baby home. And when the baby comes out. Yeah. The first six weeks, very it's, critical. It's, yeah, it's very crucial. But this time... I suffered the help syndrome and this was where I broke down because I really had hope this time because I had engaged so much expect I had read I was doing all this but let me let me ask um, were you on medications I mean for the hypertension after delivery I have never developed what you are referring to as chronic hypertension after all delivery so it just comes when you're pregnant that's all oh my BP always settles in four to six weeks after and I'm fine mm-hmm even up till date, as I'm sitting to you, I'm not You're hypertensive. Okay. You know? But then, during pregnancy... Then your BP shoots then up. Then the BP shoots up. And with the last one, the BP did not shoot up so much. But the other symptoms, the headaches, the bloating. And this time I suffered what they call help syndrome. Mm. Where your blood platelets come low. Yeah. You lose weight. I wasn't even eating, eating. well. Yeah. You know, and so they are like at a point 30 weeks. I was like, Oh, please, Lord, let me get to 33 weeks at oh least. My goodness. Then the survival rate is high if mm -hmm. the baby comes mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. My baby came out, I called her Grace. Beautiful name. I thank you. I was really looking forward to meeting her. She came out, I was in pain, I was shipped to my intensive care unit. She was a Niku. When I was ready to meet her. The day I was ready to meet her and I went there, I was told she had just passed 30 minutes ago. She had just passed? Yeah. So I didn't meet baby Grace alive. As I knew her and I felt like she was my most active yeah. baby in my womb. Yeah. I met her dead and even her, I refused to look at her No, I, 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 can't, I can't imagine what you'll be going through because yeah. for the fourth time, yeah. it's, 
It's traumatizing. Yeah, it is. And for somebody like my husband, he couldn't go through it because it's been, it's been like. It's like I'm done. Yeah. I'm but done. I pushed. Yeah. I had faith because I knew, I felt I had the experts around. Mm -hmm. So personally, I always tell people that personally, Ghana Health System has failed me. Hmm. Three times. Because the only success story I Kwe Wa Kwe Labi Ufuswapia have is because I delivered outside. Not because I had it in Ghana. in Ghana. So Ghana Health System has failed me. But I'm sure there are many others out there who are not like me and have their own success story. Stories. But if I was the worst case, I am saying mm -hmm. that Ghana Health has failed me. It's, 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 sad. it's, sad. it's sad because you, you know that we have expects in Ghana. No matter how the system is, we could have done something, yeah. not for it to happen three times. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I am, I'm sitting here thinking about the fact that, or someone will be sitting there and be like, but if we, you had it once and it happened, why did you go through That's it? Eh. Trust me, you don't want to be in her shoes. Yeah. Because having a baby, first of all, getting pregnant and having a baby. It's exciting. It's amazing. It's, it's just wonderful. And all you're looking forward to it's is just carrying your more... children. Thank you. And it's amazing that, you know, even after all that I've been through, after the fourth one, that was when I actually formally subscribed to the help of a clinical psychologist. All this while, all this while, I've been dealing with a trauma on a personal level. So how were you coping, though? I was, well, I shut myself out, mm -hmm. minding my own business. Okay. There's a lot of crying that goes on. You yeah. know, people see you and they're like, you're a strong woman. I know. And you say that you pass have very insensitive comments. Yeah. Like unconsciously, they just pass certain comments. Exactly. And I'm like, you have no idea. Yeah. The pain behind the yeah. smile you see. Yeah. You know, and you begin to think if you are less of a woman. Hmm. You begin to think if you have faith like I do in God. Why Whether, is this happening to me? Yeah, you are not God, one of God's favorite children. Yeah. Because others are current. You see the Kaya here, she's fine. You oh, know the stress yeah. she goes through. Yeah. But you, you seem to well supposed to be, supposedly have everything, mm -hmm. but you have, go through all this thing. And so there has been so much deep pain that I used to cry a lot. And somehow my husband tries, but he can't relate at the emotional level. Yeah. So you see me crying a lot, you know, inside. You don't want to eat? I do. You have, like, no, you, I do. You know, you oh, my appetite. food. I've always loved food. <laughs> that one. I never lost it. But my social life. Yes, okay. I just didn't want to mingle. I just wanted to mind my business, do my own thing. Yeah. But you see, the crying makes you, it makes you develop other health conditions. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you begin to have wild thoughts. Mm -hmm. Am I worthy? Should I even be still living? I mean, yeah, like what's the point? You started this journey with a group of friends. They have four babies and you have only one to boast of. I mean, what is the point? Yeah. And so then you try to console yourself and think of those who have none mm. or those who passed at mm -hmm. their first attempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I tell myself, well, I hate comparison. This is me. Yeah. I've said I want five children. And let me have it. Let me have it. Yeah. So if I'm not having it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And up till date, Funny enough, even though I know scientifically my body is not, according to science, good to have a baby anymore, my natural desire as a woman to have more babies is not quenched. Yeah. It's still there. Mm -hmm. And so there are times I send audio me videos to my mom, like crying. Aww. And then she was like, ah, you need to see someone. This is in addition to all the life struggles that you go through. Yeah. So I see a clinical psychologist and... One of the things they try to tell you is that whenever there's a problem, there are three spectrums. Mm -hmm. The one you have total control over. Mm -hmm. The one you have no, no control, control over. over. Yeah. And then the middle one where you have some control mm -hmm. over. The best way to deal with everything is always to deal with the one that you, you, you have total you can't, control yeah, over. You can't control. You can't control death. At all. You can't control. I can't control your actions, Rosina. Yeah. I can't control my husband's actions, but mm -hmm. I can control how I react mm -hmm. to every situation in life. And that is where the healing will come from. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, you have to engage yourself with other things. But then you have to give yourself time to grieve. You need, you need to take as much time to heal. That is what you have to do. Suppressing grief doesn't help. It's not help. the best. You have to take time to actually grieve. Heal. 
And what I found for myself was to grief by working. Oh, so you got busy. And that is how my foundation came into <laughs> place. I got busy. Wow. That is interesting. So you actually kind of like, you know what, instead of just sitting there wallowing in pity and pain and probably judging, comparing, yeah. being all whatever about it, I'm going to channel whatever I've gone through into something profitable. Something profitable. And that is how you started your foundation. And that foundation. is how I started our foundation. Because there's a lot of women out there who either don't know. They don't. And who know but really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> or don't know why they should care. Yeah. Or those who also know, like the practitioners who know, are not able to communicate it well to mm. them. Mm. Or they overlook. Mm -hmm. There's an oversight somewhere or taken for granted. That's the thing. I, I mean, you, you, you go to our hospitals. And let's come back to the Ghana Health System failing you thing. It's not like I'm siding with them, though. But you, 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 go, you go to the hospital and there's one midwife to like 20, 20 women. Yeah. One midwife to 20 women. So imagine if you have to check all the BPs of all these people and you have to take care of them and attend to each and every one. The person is overwhelmed. The system is stressed. It's stressed. The system is trying, but the system is stressed. It's stressed. One, I be, our, the whole medical condition. You see, hypertension has to do with your blood pressure going up. Mm -hmm. And there are so many factors, mm -hmm. the biological factors. And I also what I call the social factors. Yeah. Sometimes Which you, plays an important a role. A very important role. The social factors. The environment. Yeah. You go to the hospital, just the physical environment mm -hmm. has an influence. How the practitioners and the nurses relate to you mm. also influence. Yeah. Somebody will tell you, oh, nothing, you know, on Kwana B Pikosho. Or, you know, trying to say, why, wh what is your problem? Yeah. They don't, you see, like practitioners... why are you personalizing what you're yeah. going through? <laughs> practitioners fail to recognize that every utterance of this has an influence on the outcome and well-being of the patient. That's an impact. Issues of because, respect yeah. for maternal care. Yeah. yeah. And you've got to talk with your patients. You've got to communicate You have to well. be careful. Your choice of words. Yeah. I actually want to find out how they, they, they kind of like even break the news to you because it's... They, they, you know, the nurses, before even they break the news, their body language will even give them away. Oh. <laughs> and there's some small gossip somewhere with hey, the nurses. Hey, that are gonna, you know, and so you, 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 you begin It's to, like you already, you know what, I know what you're coming to tell me. Yeah. And so they tell you and you're like, uh, okay, so what next? And then after, it's like you become a, a sympathy, empathy case, you know, be a home, will be that oh. sort of thing. And 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 it and, and it's 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 it's, it's sad. sad. You know, the our this. system of healthcare is not holistic. Mm -hmm. I think that every pregnant woman during antenatal, especially when you become an inpatient, when the clinician is seeing you, that's the obstetric and ecologist. There should be a psychologist following. Yeah. There should be you know those who have to deal with the other issues following because they have no idea what goes on at the home mm -hmm. during pregnancy they don't that adds to all the yeah pressure issues yeah we we we, we what, what happened is that they just tend to generalize stuff yeah most of the protocols that happen even in the like in the health system is all most mainly like okay general stuff that yeah. is going on so this is the protocol this is, yeah. but there are some individuals that need peculiar attention yeah. i i want to find out if they they even referred you to a clinic because going experiencing the same thing like a pattern for three times. Did they even refer you to I a psychologist? I never went to the. Well, it was a rage that they did because mm -hmm. they realized that I've reached my peak and I was really hopeful of, of this. Yeah. But that's when, in fact, I demanded for it. Like you demanded for it. I must have it. it. Yeah. Because okay. at this time, it's, all, it's only my mother and my husband that I've been using as a support your system. Your family. Your family. Support yeah. system very important. important. And so you can imagine if nobody had that kind of family support yeah. system, yeah. you go through this yeah. alone. You either go to the extreme and become seriously traumatized yeah. and become psychotic. psychosis. Yeah, just become psychotic. Or you overcome it somehow. But even that, 
it may be a temporal overcoming yeah in the future it may manifest you can never you can you can like you you can never say that like grace let, let's talk about yeah. grace grace will always be on your mind i know you're going to tell um your your, your daughter that you would have had a sister called yeah. grace it's a if it was your life yeah you lived you, you lived in moments where you were carrying grace yeah. where you were taking her to school you yeah. had fantasized yeah. all those things yeah so no matter what whatever someone tells you that oh the baby is gone deal yeah. with it or whatever like just yeah. try and let go as a woman there's no way you can easily just let, you can't forget yeah. that it's it's not that easy it's not easy you can't but the question is also that we if you if you dwell in it too much you may become yeah. you depressed so depressed so depressed that you can't resume normal life and normal yeah. routine yeah but it's definitely not easy and that's why mental health an aspect of our life that is downplayed but needs Big to time. be it's big yeah. exactly yeah, it's big we, we we don't we don't pay much attention to yeah. it at all because daily every day you know our law say that nobody is proven mentally unstable until you can show that they have yeah but daily we are suffering mental stress every but time. the issue of depression and mental health comes in when this thing becomes continuous persistent over three months six months then mm -hmm. of course you have an issue but daily we are all having stress issues yeah. to deal with so it's not been easy as a woman myself life you know I, somebody was just asking me why i wasn't whether i was ticklish and yeah. i was just telling the person that i wasn't ticklish because life has sucked all the tickles Aww. out of me you're smiling but it's deep like yeah. trust me it's not something that you should you should smile about but i yeah. can understand why you're smiling now because yeah. you've survived it exactly. exactly life has sucked out of you yeah all the tickling what did have you say? sucked all the tickles out, of, out me. of you. Tickles are supposed to make you laugh. Yeah, you're and supposed happy. to have be that sensitive, that, that good feeling, that good feeling. But it's hard to have that good feeling now, because really, no. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you just you, you like have just to deal keep, with it. Yeah. All you're doing is just keeping yeah. going and being there for your daughter. Yeah. Who still needs her mom? And sometimes that's what it does. You are not even able to be there. For the for you, one, for the that, one that you have, and you you end up losing, you the lo time yeah, you losing the time that you have. Mm -hmm. And you know, as kids also, they can tell. That's oh, yeah. when they start building up. Yeah. Say like, "Mommy doesn't yeah. like me." Or, mommy, every time I come, she comes and I'm praying. She's like, "Mommy, are you crying? Aww. Why are you crying?" Then she'll come and join me cry. <laughs> So you even put the child in a certain state that exactly, is not right. Exactly. And I always cry like every day, every single day. You become so emotional and. It's you, you keep hearing good news of family members. Hey, where are wow, our boy? Where are our girl? And you're like, twins. where did you go wrong? Yeah. And if, and if you went wrong, are they, Could they seem to have forgiven? had more favor than you. So yeah. what is Could it? Could you not be forgiven? Exactly. It's what, what would you say were your breaking moments? All this, I mean, I'm, I know you have a lot of, but what would you say what, were your like, this is it, like, that is the, the, that was what just led to my postpartum depression. Yeah. What would you say was your breaking I moment? At the time where, you know, when you're at the hospital, after your, the news was broken, um, I didn't know whether to talk about it or be quiet about it. But mm -hmm. for the next 24 hours, my BP doubled. It rose. Yeah, it will. And they kept on administering labital protocol and it wasn't working. And you are left alone in that room after everybody comes to visit. And you are there alone and all you keep hearing is this BP sound. Beep. Me. Yeah. Which doesn't make it any yeah, better. Yeah, it doesn't make it any better. Because that's the same sound that you hear when you go to the new hotel intensive care. Oh. And you just begin to hear a song that says... What shall I render unto the, unto Lord, the Lord for everything that he has done? And you begin to ask yourself what it is that you should render unto him yeah. after going through this for the fourth time. Because surely this time with grace, I had faith. You were hopeful. I can see that I did all that I called. The first one you can blame is on ignorance. The other ones may be failure in monitoring. But with baby grace, I did you knew. all that I called. I had a BP machine at home, everything. 
But still. So you choose your monitoring, your BV, your BP regularly at I night. have become maybe expert. what what they say pocket lawyer, pocket <laughs> doctor. You become an expert. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, but why? And I still ask myself why. You know, and the sad thing was because my husband could not connect with me mm. at that point. And yeah, you feel very lonely. You feel very lonely. So lonely because this was a bond and a friend that you had in your stomach. And then when it's out, she's not even there for you to continue the bond. You feel empty. Yeah. And nothing fills it really except for those of us who have faith in Christ, we fill it with God. Yeah. But nobody. Yeah. Not even your partner. And sadly, even the one that you have living, the baby, is not able to feel that mm -hmm, emptiness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you really feel empty. Yeah. And when you have such near-death experiences, you really, like, nothing fears you. I'm done, like, yeah. I can exit any time. Yeah. And so, I grieved a lot behind the doors. And lots of people don't know. Yeah. But I have grieved a lot. So with and, and so when you hear people say, Oh, you're looking fine. I'm like, yeah. You have no idea. You have no idea. Apart, apart from your family having given you your support, like you're saying, like you have your lonely times and all those things, but how would you say that personally you were able to, to survive it? I think who you are as a woman also has an influence okay in terms of your personality trait mm -hmm. in my own case i'm a go-getter okay i fall i must rise sure that's what that's i went that's a good with. spirit and so in that spirit even though there were times i almost geared off mm. wanting to give up I won't lie to you. There's been suicidal thoughts. Whoa. But you remember that when you fall, you must rise. Yeah. And for the sake of the daughter, you must stand tall. You have to. And so that is how I overcame. And that is how I am still overcoming. Surviving it. And so I speak to myself. And even as I engage with my psychologist, mm -hmm. there was a time I had to move away from everybody so mm -hmm. i just travel yeah. unnoticed not telling go anybody go have some me time just go have some me time very and important. so it is very necessary to be strong as a woman for yourself for yourself because the truth is life will still go on if yeah. you are not there yeah and so it better still go on with you there with until you. the right time when god calls yeah. you yeah and so for me i think who i am as a person is what helped me to overcome in my faith of course oh yeah in christ yeah it's 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 important that you you know who you are yeah and then know that i can take it one step at a yeah. time it's one step at a time yeah believe in something yeah there has to be something that must keep you going you need hope yeah you need hope hope is not dead hope is alive yeah 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 so that's what you have to and even if you are a non-christian and you well if you if you say you don't believe in anything there's just that something yeah. that you want to live for yeah you, you so need hold it on to that you need it yeah and else so, you'll give up and giving up is never an option <laughs> it is an option but shouldn't be chosen yeah thank you i like the part you said it's an option but you shouldn't choose it yeah because then you feel. Yeah, then you feel. Unless you want to feel. But even that one too, you shouldn't you choose shouldn't. it. You shouldn't. You should never give up. Whatever traumatic experiences we go through, grief when you have to, cry when you have to, cry, nag when you have to, yeah. complain let it all, when let it you all have out. to. But don't make it a habit. But though. don't make it a habit. Yeah. Let that time yeah. pass. Yeah, don't make it a habit. Because you are more than what life has hit on you. There's more to us. There's more to us. And so it's sad when you see that a lot of women are in the mental hospitals because of things like this. Mm -hmm. People keep asking me four times and you're like still how, here. Like, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, because I have a purpose. Yeah, that's it. 
you know and 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 issues of relationship i mean marital issues alone can keep you <laughs> at a certain insanity level oh yeah and <laughs> so we don't want to go into that at all but that's you, for another day that's for another day <laughs> so for the physical trauma the pain the cesarean i mean we know what i mean when you cut a <laughs> a chicken or <laughs> the chicken doesn't feel it but just the small blade that cuts you mm -hmm. you're like ajay this one they've the cut whole, the yeah. skin gone under the three layers and put their hand, put inside, their hand their inside and then after you are off the pain meds it's no joke my dear ladies yeah. it's no joke you have to treat to you that. have to make sure that your, yes. your wound doesn't get infected. your wound heals so up, as i'm here now i'm fine yeah but there were times where i couldn't walk mm, you couldn't walk yeah because i'm in pain, pain. you are in pain you you your pain your, the level of pain that you went through is holistic very holistic physical emotional Emo thank you and that and it's also fine it will drain, drain you your finance fine, yeah, yeah to drain your fine medications lines, yeah. medications scan and all that and it's it's not easy and so i've really developed a high pain threshold because of experiences like this but i hope other women won't go through it and even if they do they have to have the coping strategy. Support you system. see, the duty of a psychologist is not to be always there to hear you because they can't always be there. Yeah. Ghana here, I understand there's only about 33 to 40 psychologists here. There's not much. No, oh no, 300 out of a population of 30 That's too million. too small. Ghanaians don't even believe in... in, in they in, don't. Yeah, we don't believe in therapy and we don't believe in all those, like, what, 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 what we were discussing earlier that you've seen because of the stigma and all those things. But there's nothing wrong in going to seek help. Yeah. Out there, people see what they call shrink. They see them every time. Yeah. Even a workplace puts that in place mm -hmm. because they know the mm -hmm. stress of mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to see a psychologist. It is. I see one. I'm not ashamed of At it. At all. It is. I actually like to do meditation a lot. Yeah. To kind of like keep it my... It also helps. Because sometimes, trust me, somebody will just... It's like you are, you are minding your business. <laughs> and I was just telling somebody <laughs> that. You know, the Bible says, when you see the enemy or the adversary, you should flee. <laughs> and I was telling the person, whilst you are fleeing, the enemy is fleeing <laughs> after you. Right after you. <laughs> right after you. And you need to keep your sanity. Yeah. So meditation is another yeah. technique. Yeah, meditation. It's, I used to do that too. It was very yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's helpful. It's very good. But most of our women don't understand meditation. They live in a society, we live in a culture where you don't have that time to meditate. Mm. That is why our women hold on to faith. Yeah. Religion is the healing platform for a lot of women, yeah. irrespective of whatever issues, even dealing with depression. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's about time, as the psychologist said, yeah. to work together with the religious leaders. We need to. Because they seem to have more faith in religion than science. Yes. Oh, as for that one, dear, they would always want to fall onto the churches, the, the malams, or the, all those other people, other than going to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we have to. But one thing that I, 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 I like what you said about the fact that you don't need to give up. Know that you have a purpose. Yeah. And like you said, you were driven by your purpose and your personality. Mm -hmm. So I would want our viewers to understand that the stresses in life would always come. Yeah. You can't control what happens mm -hmm. to you. But what you can do is that you as an individual, how do you react? Thank you. So remember, you can control how you react to it. Yes. Because that's what, what you have complete that's control. That's within What you don't have power. control about, don't bother. Control. What you can totally yeah. control. Let's talk about your NGO or your uh, your foundation. Yes. So basically, it's just action on preeclampsia Ghana, dealing with issues of education, mm -hmm. awareness, working with researchers, and providing postpartum counselling support to okay. survivors. So we work with institutions like Greater Accra Regional Hospital and a few others, and it's just wanting to empower the woman to know the symptoms, spread the word and save a life. Wow. And how, 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 how have you, what are some of your success stories We've so We've been far? using social media mm -hmm. and you have a lot of survivors coming and saying, oh, I'm 33 weeks pregnant. I have this. Am I going to get that? Then you have to talk to them and refer them. We've also been using local media mm -hmm. for which reason I'm on your show. Exactly. You know, just to reach out to the various classes of women mm -hmm. there. 
we've also been holding workshops and webinars. To create awareness. And we are recently um, trying to do local voiceovers. Like, you know, on the radio, mm -hmm. the radio is filled with so much yeah. adverts. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to do voiceovers in the local language local so that they dialects. can be played exactly That's nice. on the radio. Approximately, we've reached over 5,000 women. In Ghana? Yeah, between 2017 and now. That's that's like four years. Yes, almost four years. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. May twenty second will be four. Will be four years. Yes. Five thousand women. Yeah. It's it's you're doing an amazing job. Yeah, try. I am um, actually like I, like I said, you are an inspiration <laughs> to lots of women, mm -hmm. lots and lots of women, mm -hmm. and I know they'll see you smiling today today it's a, it's, it's a, because you managed to channel it into something positive so that's how come you can smile and talk about it but nobody should go through what you went through no no woman should die given life and every child deserves yeah. a chance at life yeah what will be your final words to our viewers kk um i'll tell every woman out there to be empowered yeah. be empowered mentally be empowered physically you are in charge of your health when you go to a hospital, be able to talk with your doctors. If they are not listening to you, escalate your issues, but talk with them, understand what is happening to you. What I often hate is when somebody goes to the hospital and they come back and say, Monsieur, Nedroy, what's wrong with you? Ah, me anymore. This is what they, oh, it, they just gave me this yeah. medication. Kona <laughs> kofa. Be in charge of your health. That is what you have to yeah. do be in charge of your health mentally and physically and should you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out if maybe because of custom talking to family is a problem mm -hmm. seek professional yeah would anyway. you like to leave a contact in case someone wants to sure. reach your advocate sure. your, you your can NGO. contact us at telephone 0202 yeah so 0202 and then on email, apeggh2 at, no, apeggh2 at gmail.com. Gmail yes, and so I'll leave the contacts with you and yeah, then yeah. you can put it yeah, on yeah, your... Please, please but do. be strong, women. Just don't give up. Yeah. Never give up. It's easy to say, but trust me, it's possible. Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. Thank you so much, KKK. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, she, she said it all. There's nothing much to add on than to say that be strong and viewers i would like for you to remember that anything that you go on in life and whatever you think is distracting you and making you mentally unstable remember that you can you can overcome it you just need to take it one step at a time kkk has done it and you can do it just don't give up in life thank you for watching i'm rena